Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say that I really appreciate uh, uh, the invitation. Uh, it is indeed the third time uh, we are meeting uh, uh, in this format, but I'm always very pleased to meet you uh, in uh, our uh, 28 capitals uh, around Europe and any time uh, we have the opportunity to do so. Uh, indeed, for me, it is very relevant that we have this chance to um, discuss uh, the implementation uh, part uh, of the global strategy that is related to um, defense and security. Uh, as you know, um, I presented ideas on the implementation of the global strategy on uh, all fields, uh, well, not all fields, but first set of priorities uh, stemming from the global uh, strategy. Uh, so not only related to security and defense, but also uh, to other areas, and namely uh, our work uh, uh, towards uh, uh, building resilience uh, and uh, uh, the integrated approach to all uh, uh, phases of conflicts and crisis, uh, but also public diplomacy and uh, um, uh, the internal external nexus of our work. But as you also know very well, uh, the, uh, most of the attention, uh, both at uh, the public opinion level and also the political level, is focused on uh, uh, the implementation plan on security and defense. And I believe this uh, uh, meeting today is extremely timely, also because exactly in one week from now, uh, Monday next week, I will be uh, discussing and uh, um, uh, deciding on the implementation plan uh, with foreign and defense ministers uh, during a joint uh, session of uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs Council, both in the formation of uh, foreign ministers and defense ministers. So. Uh, this exchange today uh, gives give us all, I think, a good opportunity to uh, look uh, uh, more uh, in, uh, in depth um, and prepare also that meeting somehow, uh, because this goes without saying, uh, especially in the field of implementation on uh, defense and security, the ownership is uh, uh, the ownership of the member states. So it is extremely important that we do this exercise uh, step by step uh, all together. Uh, I will start uh, uh, by saying uh, two things, and then I'll try to go a little bit more into the substance. One is that uh, uh, the work on uh, uh, the implementation plan on security and defense will be part of a package uh, in two senses, in two ways. In one way, as I mentioned, it will be part of the entire work on implementation of the global strategy, so also linked to elements that are not related to security and defense. Um, but also it will be part uh, of a larger uh, security and defense package because it will be uh, closely linked to the work uh, uh, on the follow-up uh, to the joint EU-NATO declaration we signed in Warsaw. And in this respect, our work with NATO, uh, both at staff level and at uh, my level, uh, has been very intense in the last months. And I was participating to um, the um, defense minister's meeting um, some 10 days ago here in Brussels, exactly on this. Uh, so we plan uh, together with um, Secretary General Stoltenberg to present a common set of proposals for uh, an implementation of that uh, um, joint declaration uh, as a, something that is linked to this uh, work, internal work we're doing in the European Union. Uh, to stress the complementarity uh, and, uh, and the need to go hand in hand in this respect. But also, the third element of this package on European defense and security is uh, the European Defense Action Plan that the Commission will adopt uh, later this month, um, so that we have the three elements uh, hopefully uh, coherent, uh, complementary to each other, and uh, representing uh, each of them uh, one uh, element of what I believe can be really uh, a strengthening uh, of our um, security and defense um, policies and instruments. I know that we have, uh, especially around this table, we have uh, referred to the need to strengthen and to make our uh, security and defense work uh, uh, more credible and, and stronger. What is different today uh, than in the past? I believe we have two um, elements that are um, substantially very different. Uh, first of all, the awareness that the security situation inside and outside of the European Union uh, is uh, uh, not allowing us to uh, be vague or general or simply indicate good intentions. Uh, if you look at uh, the opinion polls, I, which I don't know 
it's not necessarily your task to do, but uh, this is uh, what the decision making um, level of our all our member states and European institutions is very much looking at. If you look at European um, opinion polls everywhere in every single member state, security is named as uh, number one issue for the European citizens. I am personally not so much convinced that this has dramatically changed over the last year. Probably the security uh, situation was already serious before, but there is a new awareness in our public opinion and there is a new awareness in our political leadership that first we have to do more on security and defence, that what we do on security and defence externally has an impact on our security and defence internally, that uh, the security of any of our member states has an impact on all our citizens, and we see it very clearly. Whenever something happens in one of our countries, uh, victims are very dif difficult to be identified only with one nationality, because our people are in the European Union. Uh, and the security of one of us uh, affect directly the security of all others. So it is, I think, more evident today, and this is the second element I think is new today rather than before. This is maybe the field where um, it is self-evident that uh, to do better, we have to do together. And I think that this awareness is, is more evident today than, uh, than it used to be um, in the past years.